Member statements. The member for Hamilton East Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, 1996 was a very long time ago. It's hard to remember a world where the internet and cell phones were still novelties to most people. The 1990s were a time when families gathered around the television to watch sitcoms and live sports without the distractions of tablets, text messages, or Instagram feeds. One of the galvanizing events that saw the people of Hamilton gather around their television sets or outside in a chilly minus 10 uh, stadium was the 84 Grey Cup that was held at Ivor Wynne Stadium in the fall of 96. While the Tiger Cats were not playing that day, it was still a thrilling game between Toronto and Edmonton. The game became known as the Snow Bowl, as tractors had to remove snow from the field prior to the game as well as halftime. It's been a long time coming, but at last, with a new stadium to play in, the people of Hamilton will finally get the chance to host the 108th Grey Cup this upcoming December 12th. The Hamilton Tie Cats may not be at the head of their division yet, but it's still exciting today to watch the hometown heroes represent the Eastern Division in the Grey Cup here in the Hammer. We have also been awarded the 2023 Grey Cup. If we don't win this year, we have another shot to bring the cup back to the home of the CFL Hall of Fame. As a famous saying in Hamilton has turned 100 years old this year, Speaker, in dedication to the great pigskin Pete and the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Oski Wee Wee, Oski Wawa, Holy Mackinac, Tigers, eat them raw. Thank you. Before we continue with member statements, I need to inform the House that as a result of a change in the proportionality of private members within the recognized parties, both the government and the official opposition are entitled to the same number of member statements each day. Therefore, both will be entitled to four member statements each day, and the independent members will still be entitled to one. Member statements. The member for Whitby. The Speaker, the Honourable Nina Tangri, Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction, recently introduced the Supporting People and Businesses Act. This comprehensive red tape reduction package, Speaker, builds on the three years of work to reduce the burden and lighten the load for hardworking Ontario families and businesses weighed down by the pandemic's demands. I'm pleased, Speaker, to support Ontario colleges like Durham in my Whippy riding with their innovative work on credential reform as part of the Supporting People and Businesses Act. Speaker, colleges can deliver graduates with the right credentials if they're given the autonomy and flexibility to bring programs to market quickly and design the right credentials to meet labour market needs. Speaker, since taking office, our government has been working hard to remove the red tape and re regulatory burden that make growth for businesses more difficult and stifle opportunities for job creators, nonprofit organizations, and workers across the province. Through our work to modernize the regulatory system and make Ontario ripe for future investment and economic prosperity, we're making Ontario an even better and easier place for businesses to expand and thrive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. COVID-19 is not the only pandemic we have been battling in my riding of Toronto Centre. The opioid and homelessness crises combined with COVID-19 have created an untenable situation in my community. Last month, I met with members of the Church and Wellesley Village BIA, and the stories they shared with me were shocking and heartbreaking. They told me about staff being physically assaulted and people dying in their establishments by overdose. We also spoke about their concern for the most vulnerable members in the neighbourhood. We talked about the helplessness of watching the mental health decline of our unhoused neighbours, folks who are beloved and cared for. Speaker, for three years I've stood in this House and tried to call attention to the opioid and homelessness crises as I've watched helplessly as this government has refused to act. My whole community is demanding better. I hear it from the frontline service providers, from activists, from healthcare workers, the business community, and even the police. I spoke with one of our neighbourhood officers, who was also deeply concerned. He's tired of being called to apprehend someone in serious distress, only to have them churned out of the hospital within hours with no support, no mental health or detox treatment, and no housing. While this is a complex issue that will require complex solutions, watching this government sit back and say, hey, we've tried nothing and we're all out of ideas has been frustrating beyond measure. I am urging this government to come to the table and take action today to respond to these crises in my community. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Member statements. The member for Oxford. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we've all seen the impact COVID-19 has had on small businesses across the province. In my riding of Oxford, the Walters Theatre, located in Bright, is operated by the multi-talented Wal Walters family. I had a conversation with one of the co-owners, Darren Walters, who told me the family's independent music and dinner theatre stages 120 performances in a four-month season, with paid attendance of more than 20,000. The estimated economic impact of the theatre is over $4 million annually. The pandemic brought it to a halt to the theatre's performance season, and unfortunately, they were not eligible for our government's recovery programs. Darren didn't let that get him down. He channeled his energies to create a podcast where he interviews outstanding singers and musicians and producers worldwide. This show evolved into the Stonehouse Sessions. Darren brings together musicians to create unique studio quality collaboration from their homes. One of the Stonehouse Sessions included Nashville country star T. Graham Brown combined with the Canadian singer Jason Blaine and the Canadian Country Music Association All-Star Band to perform a special rendition of Rainy Night in Georgia. Working with this video, editing musician nephew star Skyler Lambert, the final production earned them a 2021 International Tele Award honoring excellence in video and television. Mr. Speaker, we know that Ontario's small business owners are resilient and resourceful, and I'm pleased to bring an example of this from Oxford County. Thank you very much. The member for Humber River Black Creek. Thank you, Speaker. This Conservative government has kept up the liberal tradition of ignoring eye care here in Ontario. And on September 1, 2021, the situation reached a breaking point. Now it has been almost two months that OHIP covered patients are unable to receive eye care services. We're talking about children and youth up to age 19, seniors age 65 and up, and individuals with specific eye conditions and diabetes. People across our province have been reaching out desperately to get the eye care they need. In my community, I've heard from Neil, a senior with type 2 diabetes who needs regular checkups to keep his sight, Beverly, whose daughter has been suffering from eye pain and migraines, and many more. Countless people whose eyesight has changed and need a new prescription so they can continue to drive and go about their daily lives safely. Enough is enough. I'm calling on this government to immediately return to the bargaining table and work out a fair solution so people can receive the eye care they need and deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Don Valley West. Mr. Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of the community members and business owners of Thorncliffe Park who for over six months now have been working to impress upon Metrolinx and the government that they do not want the Ontario Line maintenance and storage facility in the heart of their community. Thorncliffe Park is a microcosm of this country. It is a diverse, thriving community of more than 30,000 residents from all walks of life. This past spring, I convened consultation tables, which met from April to September with Metrolinx in an effort to convey to the transit agency that there needed to be changes to the planned MSF location. I wrote to and spoke with the Minister of Transportation in this legislature. I invited her to attend our meetings or to send her associate minister or a senior staff member. Her chief of staff attended one meeting, never to return. Speaker, the community has brought forward alternative suggestions, attempted to demonstrate to Metrolinx that there are options that have not been considered, but even when Metrolinx officials seem to agree that a suggestion was worthy of consideration, there has been no change to the plan, and the community feels, Mr. Speaker, that the criteria and the numbers change each time a suggestion is brought forward. I believe that if the minister had taken the time to familiarize herself with the situation, she would have directed Metrolinx differently. Speaker, the Shovels are not yet in the ground. This is a community that wants and needs higher order transit, but not at the expense of the integrity of the community. This government needs to say yes to listening to Thorncliffe Park, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Kitchener Conestoga. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And one of my family's favorite ways to kick off the weekend in Kitchener Conestoga is to head to the local farmers market. And we are lucky to be just a stone's throw away from Canada's largest year-round farmers market and one of the largest in North America, Mr. Speaker, the market in St. Jacobs. 
But there are several other markets in my riding, like the ones in Wilmot, Wellesley Village, and Elmira, where you conveniently pick up local produce, meat, cheese, and baked goods all at one stop. But there is one thing that is noticeably absent from Ontario's farmer, farmers markets, Mr. Speaker, and that is craft beer. Even though craft brewers produce locally and support local jobs, they haven't had the same opportunity as wineries and cideries who have been able to sell in farmers markets for years now. The St. Jacob's Market sees over one million visitors annually. Uh, and that is one million potential customers craft brewers in Waterloo Region have been missing out on. That is until our government's 2021 budget made it possible for local breweries to set up shop and sell their beer at Ontario's farmers markets. I was thrilled to join the Attorney General, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural, uh, Food and Rural Affairs, the Ontario Craft Brewers and Ontario Chamber of Commerce earlier this month in St. Jacobs to celebrate this change and learn about the benefits it brings to craft breweries in Waterloo Region. Uh, breweries like Stockyards and Kitchener, who you can now find at the St. Jacobs Market. We are opening up new opportunities for them at a crucial time so they can grow their business and support the local economy. I, like many others, am happy to be able to add craft breweries to the local list of local businesses that I can support at farmers markets across my riding. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The next member's statement, the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you and good morning, Speaker. Speaker, frontline healthcare heroes like our nurses are tired of empty words from this government. What they need is action. They risked their lives to serve and protect those who needed it throughout this pandemic. And I want to thank nurses from the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario from Brampton, like Teresa Serrano, Deanna Escopenali. Uh, Gayani Wurasing and Charles Muthapore, who have been advocating that this government do the right thing and repeal Bill 124, Speaker. These frontline health care workers risk their lives to serve our community, and the way that the government is currently thanking them is by capping their wages through Bill 124. Speaker, our frontline health care heroes deserve so much better than that. Speaker, I'm urging this government to do the right thing and repeal Bill 124 and ensure that frontline health care heroes are rewarded for the hard work and dedication that they have shown throughout this pandemic. They deserve that. They deserve to be paid fairly. They are burnt out, overworked, and stagnant wages are not helping a staffing crisis in health care. We all have a responsibility to address the staffing crisis here. Capping wages of health care workers is not going to help us attract and retain the health care workers that we need here in the province of Ontario. So I'm urging this government to do the right thing, listen to the nurses, listen to the health care workers, help us address the staffing crisis, and ensure that workers are paid fairly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next member's statement, the member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I'm honoured to have based in my riding of Etobicoke Lakeshore a storied Canadian regiment, the Toronto Scottish Regiment, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen's Mother's Own, who are celebrating their 100th anniversary. Originally formed as the 75th Mississauga Battalion, the regiment was renamed on the 1st of September 1921 to the Toronto Scottish Regiment. The Tor Scots have contributed significantly to Canadian history and fought in some of history's greatest battles of both world wars. The Somme, Passchendaele, and Vimy Ridge, Dieppe, Falaise, and Northwest Europe. Members served in Korea and numerous peacekeeping missions, including the UN and NATO-led missions like Bosnia and, most recently, Afghanistan. Most recently, the regiment aided Ontario by providing emergency COVID-19 relief when the Canadian Armed Forces were asked to assist. We do not have to wait until November the 11th to say thank you to those who have served, continue to serve, and continue to make sacrifices in so many ways. There are so many ways to serve, and I know that the Tor Scots have found every one of them. Finding words worthy enough to express our gratitude is difficult, so I simply just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Your contributions will always be cherished. I congratulate the Toronto Scottish Regiment's Commanding Officer, Lieutenant Colonel Kearney, and all the members of the regiments on this milestone. Happy anniversary, and as your regiment's motto says, carry on. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements. Before I invite oral questions, I'm pleased to inform the House that Tanvi Soni from the riding of Brampton West is today's page captain, and we have with us today at Queen's Park her father, 
Nikki G. Sony, and her sister, Jill Sony. Emily Martin from the writing of King Vaughan is also today's page captain. And we have with us at Queen's Park her mother, Camilla Martin, her grandmother, Diane Martin. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here. 